Let's make crumb from ah real monsters. Okay, so I grew up watching Real Monsters and it was one of those shows that were legendary, but also kind of low key. Like I don't hear people talk about it like they do about other shows of the time like Rugrats or Dexter's Lab. And I know Dexter's Lab was on Cartoon Network and Real Monsters was on Nickelodeon, but as a kid, I didn't know or care what network these shows were on. To me, whether it was Ren and Stimpy, Rocco's Modern Life, Hey Arnold, Doug, Cow and Chicken, Powerpuff Girls, Johnny Bravo, Ed, Ed and Eddie, Courage the Cowardly Dog, and many more that I forget. All these shows existed on the same level of legendary entertainment for 10, 11, 12 year old guy. They're all ingrained in core memories. They've shaped me and formed sources of inspiration probably to this day. I probably mentioned it in the Squidward gross up video I made, but man, there was something extremely unique about 90s cartoons. It was a weird wild west, an insane, grotesque, experimental landscape of shows aimed for quote unquote children. I don't know if you can call that children's shows. Somebody honestly has to make a documentary about it because my guess is that there was an implosion of children's cartoons after the 70s and 80s where cartoons were these extremely safe and tame form of entertainment which was created only and literally only as a means to sell toys. That's just the story of 80s and 70s cartoons. The toy came first, then came the cartoon. At some point, I think just the lack of artistic integrity just faded and studios probably scrambled for new creative directions. And as it usually goes, times like that is when new and experimental artists are given free reign to bring a breath of fresh air and hopefully revive the dying studios. So all these young artists started creating these wild shows with gnarly artwork that hit it off. And once they did, new shows popped off by the same circle of artists, kind of keeping that same wild spirit for a while. I mean, I'm really assuming a lot here, but whatever it is, first off, I'd like to see a documentary about it. And second, I just feel so lucky to have been in the right age at that time. I mean, 80s cartoons were incredible, and I'm sure that the 2000s and 2010s have their gems too. Every generation is unique in its own way, but man, the fact that something like this or this were legitimate characters for kids is still amazing to me. Anyway, yeah, Crumb, such an incredibly designed character. I'll take him over Mike Wazowski any day of the week.
When I started working on him, I thought I would keep him relatively close to the cartoon form, like very simplified and kind of clean. But the more I worked on him, the more I wanted to bring him more to real life. If you look at the character, you can just feel that he's supposed to be this super gloopy and gooey and dirty creature, like a ball of fat or I don't know, a ball sack or something. So the more I worked on him, the more I started adding more textures and fatty flaps. I just wanted it to be more visceral. And later on, I'm actually gonna come back to him and push it even further. I put all these details on different layers just in case I wouldn't like them, but I did like them. I did. teeth I just quickly made in cinema because it's just so easy. I converted an edge from the inside of his mouth to a spline, made a group with a bunch of these simple teeth shapes in the line and used a spline deformer on the whole group. If you like this content and want to support the channel, feel free to check out my Patreon or membership where you can find these project files, watch these videos with no ads, get free products from the store, as well as other cool perks, but mostly help me make more and better content for y'all. Also you can buy this model, as well as other material and model packs on my new plastic gum road, as well as prints and pins I made on the pink eye gum road. And I totally understand that not everyone can support that way, but even subscribing and liking the video helps the channel, or giving me a follow on Instagram at Ojang or the channel at Brand New Plastic. And if you want to help build a community, share your work, and just fuck around, join our Discord. I'll leave the links in the description. 
Either way, I really appreciate you. Then I UV unwrapped everything in cinema, which was very straightforward because the topology was pretty decent. In substance, I, again, started pretty simple, but just felt like stacking more and more layers of different shades and skin imperfections and spots. And at this point I realized, yeah, this is gonna be kind of on the gross side. Not too much, but definitely not like cartoony. I wonder if I do this to make up for, I don't know, maybe not being super confident in the model itself. So I'm kind of overcompensating with just extreme detail and texture. I don't know. Maybe next one I should try more like a cartoony, clean version. Anyway, I'm just using different layers of different shades and colors. So I'm lightly painting in the colors with rough brushes and some I'm using curvature masks uh, to paint crevices and edges.
At this point, I knew I needed to go back to ZBrush and add a bunch of more gross details to the body. And I also retopologized the whole body because um, I don't even know why. I think I had very tiny issues with the topology and I figured it'll be just really easy to redo it and project all the details on the new topology. There were some glitches with the projection, so I had to manually go in and fix all the glitches. Then I just added some bump and roughness maps and substance for some extra detail. And while I was at it, I figured I might as well add some more details to the eyes because they just felt too clean uh, compared to the rest of the body. Then in cinema, after adding all the textures, I added all these pubic disgusting hair he has, which just made it so much better. And I didn't really like the way the substance for scattering looked, so I went back to substance and painted a very simple solid color scattering color channel, which I feel like looks much better. Then some simple lighting, one large area light lighting the front of his face, one smaller rim light coming from the other side, 
and some ambient light from the HDRI. And that's the final results. Man, did I enjoy this. It was very satisfying and I love the results. It wasn't as challenging as some of my last projects, but it was still really, really good practice. And honestly, after all the struggles I had with some of the last projects, I feel like this time I needed just to have a smooth ride to bring a smile to my face. So yeah, there it is. And if you have any ideas or a model you would love to see me make, uh, let me know in the comments. I have a list of stuff I want to do, but I'm always open to cool stuff I haven't thought about. You can buy this model on my Gumroad, buy prints and pins on my other Gumroad, or get this project file on my Patreon. And a smelly but loving hug to all my real scary patrons and members you see on the screen right now. I love you. Have a great day. Peace.